Michael, there's a man named Michael with a vision to show. Billy thought to go, he's got the spark, dreaming of a future that'll light up the dark. But on the other side, Bill Nye's on the rise, with his lap of charts, he's got down all the lines. And it's just fixed, it's all in the map, you can't pull from the ether, you're just chasing a path. But oh, Michael's rising like a morning sun, with the power of ether, he will be out done. Now stand up and shout, let the truth be a firm Feel the energy flow, let's change the world In the heart of a laugh, the tension was thick Skeptics gathered round the table ready to fit Chose your fruit, but let the taste be When I find the stream, you're just chasing a spin From Michael Scott, my, with flying his eyes Watch as I spin, let the naysayers cry Drop in fast, then a heart full of fight I'll show you the power of his hidden sight Oh, Michael's rising like the morning sun With the power of ether, he will be outdone Well, stand up and shout, let the truth be unfurled Feel the energy flow, let's change the world Welcome back to Beneficence TV. This is The Sesh, a pre-recorded podcast session. This pre-recorded session lets us dive into the research of those who can't join us live uh, due to scheduling or maybe time zone I issues. Uh, today, it's an honor to have Michael Morell back with us. We're going to dive into his latest experiments and compare insights with my own and have a few ideas we can brainstorm as well. So, uh, Michael, it's really exciting and an honor to have you back with us. How you doing? Hi, thanks, Ben. Yeah, really good. Um, just been playing about with the coils. Um, and um, as you can see in the background here, I've got the 6-watt LED light. Um, so it's running off the Nunez modified dual thief. Nice. Um, yeah. So, um, so for example, we are using um, 18 volt and 250 milliamps. Um, so we've got, yeah. So, and you can see the light uh, is pretty bright. Um, I mean, we're getting good efficiency, you know, out of the out of the the coil. So I'm I'm currently just using the big coil, uh, this one right here. Um, and then I'm um, using the uh, magnetic induction from the smaller coil here. Obviously, when we do that, we improve efficiency as well. So we're doing um, 18 volts, 258 milliamps for a six watt, six watt light bulb. Oh, you cut out just a little bit. Voltage decrease, but the current say, yeah, stay consistent. So oh, there we go. And then we've got, you can also do um, like, um, yeah, you can also pull so from the that? magnetic field. You know, I mean, there's, you could see how many, how many LEDs you could put around this coil, right? Right. Um, what, what is the, that that you have attached there to that LED? That's so it's, um, it's, they are like one watt LED each, right? Uh -huh. One watt LED each, so there's three watt of LEDs, and then there's a uh, a core, a ferrite core, and oh. then I've wound a um, a single wire, but I, I spaced it out so maybe a couple of milli apart, and so it's a bit like a flyback if you like. It's more it's more like a transformer essentially, you know. Um, if right. you had like a a bigger a bigger wire like with three turns or something this could be like a high voltage flyback uh but i just made i made i made this myself so this just a a pvc um um 
formwork and then I've got the Ferrat core inside and I've got, um, I think this is um, 2,000 tons, 2,500 tons of, um, what is it? 2,000 tons of 1.1 milli, uh, 1.1 milli, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it's 2,000 tons. Oh, it's 1.1 milli Henry, that's what it is, sorry. So, yeah, so I just calculated the inductance on that, but um, yeah, it's just 2,000 tons of very fine gauge wire. Um, I would say it's probably 0.2 uh, mini gauge wire. And um, wow. yeah, and it's it's good just to, to see the inductance. I mean, um, I've been using my phone. Um, there's, um, there's, an, um, there's an app um, uh, for iPhone and um, essentially it's a, a magnetometer. Um, so it measures the magnetic field of your coil. And I use that a lot, uh, but to be fair, this this is um, this works as well. So you don't have to like, you know, damage your phone or because you know if the magnetic field is really big, this 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 you know you don't know what's going to happen. But um, sometimes right. I do use the app, uh, and sometimes I use that. I mean, it's and you think you think well, you know, it's how much how much can you inductions can you pull out of it because. You're not increasing it's, the current. Not, yeah, you're not really. And are you affecting the voltage at all? The voltage is going. Um, it's going down. Wow. So the voltage yeah. is going down. And it's yeah, it's not. So it's not really affecting the input, like in terms of being uh uh, uh going uh negative in efficiency. <laughs> Oh, Oops, say, sorry. Slightly it's slightly increasing the efficiency. Yeah. Wow. That's very important to to note there. That's that's awesome. And you're using I mean, I'm... again, you're using the modified jewel thief with this setup right here? Yeah, so let's have a look. I'll try to move this holder here. Hang on. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, let me uh, crack open this Pepsi. Oh yeah. Well, so let's just let's just calculate this, right? So it's uh, eighteen volt, two hundred and sixty milliamps. So let's have a look. Uh, eighteen point four times zero point two six, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're pulling four point eight watts, um, and um, I mean this is this is fairly bright. I mean it's very very bright. Um, um, again, we would we would need like a, a a kind of lumen meter or something to actually measure the actual intensity of the LED light. Uh, but I have plugged the I have plugged the the light to uh, the mains power. And I've got, you know, a watt meter, and um, I've um, I've checked the watt meter, and it's exact. It's actually um, five point six watt LED. Um, so it's it, it's you know they're selling it as a six watt LED, but actually it's pulling five point six watt. Um, and so I've got you know the I've got a variac, which is a variable transformer. Mm. And um, so, you know, the voltage here in the UK is 250 volts, right, for the mains power. And so when I was going up around 200 volts, the LED light was actually pulling up more power. It was pulling six watt of power. And as I went up to 250 volts, um, then the, it settled down to 5.6 watt, uh, the LED. Um, and um, so, I mean, it is an efficient efficient setup to be fair with just this uh, uh, modified jewel fib setup, right? Um, very efficient. And then that's the the schematic if your viewers wants to see this. So it's, I'll just turn the light back on again. Yeah, and I'll also, um, I'll probably uh, include 
the video uh, that you presented, your tutorial video. Again, we have a disclaimer. Um, this is just for information purposes only or professionals who know what they're doing. We don't, we're not held responsible if you hurt yourself um, or you damage your components, which you could very well do. Yeah, thanks, Ben, for saying that. Yeah, exactly. We, we don't we don't want to take any responsibilities, you know, in um, you playing with electricity, it's dangerous. So if, um, you know, if you're not a licensed electrical engineer, um, just, um, yeah, just be careful um, and do it on your, at your own risk. You know, we're not liable for, for any damages or loss you, you, you know, you could have uh, from trying to replicate anything we do, right? Yeah, this back EMF is not like to be taken lightly. It fries components all the time. You know, you don't know what, what's going to happen uh, with some of your circuits if you're messing with. It's unpredictable, you know, unless you really know what, what you're working with. So, Ben, do you remember we were talking about the inverted wave? Yes. So, does that have something to do with, like, where you clip the multimeter? So um, I've got no, I've got the oscilloscope probe on the collector, right? So um, you can't really see it, but I've got the probe here um, to the uh, collector of the NPM transistor. Um, but what you're seeing here is, um, do you remember you were saying the an inverted wave, right? You were saying, hang on, let me try to hold this up. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. Okay, so let me just show you something. I'll show you. Yeah, so what I've done is I've inverted the wave. So it used to be like this. You saw that before. Do you remember? Right. Yes, I do. So yeah, the wave looked like this. Wave, but... so... Yeah. Go on. What you were going to say? I was going to say it's exactly what the waveform I get with the Mark One coil and the, the other coils, you know, hooked up to the, the dual thing. Same exact, you know, it's kind of spiky in some areas, but the same consistency. So this is what I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking, you know, the dual fifth, um, usually the dual fifth, its duty cycle uh, would, would always be um, quite large. And here you can see, you can just see small spikes and it, it's saying here the duty is only 4% um, duty cycle. So I think what I've what I've, um, I think this is wrong. I think this information is wrong. So I inverted the signal. So you can, there's a function where you can invert the signal. And I think this is the actual. Well, that's um, what we're seeing. Yeah, this is what we're saying. So we, we're actually seeing 95% duty cycle. So 95% of the time it's on and then the rest is off. And I think this is the accurate um, waveform. However, saying that, if I zero this, you can see the waveform is still in the negative side. So this is um, this is just your zero line here. Right here is the zero line. Oh, so, so it's already like the baseline is already in the negative. So there's no positive. So this is where this is where I'm a bit perplex. And um, I've I've actually hooked up. I've got a uh, a bug boost converter at the back here. I can show you if you want, but I hooked it up and. Um, and I grounded my probe clip. So at the minute it's, the probe clip is floating. So I'll just move this out of the way. Yeah, yeah no, so, we discussed uh, where to hook up the the, the, um, the uh, other end of the um, probe. So we can- Yeah, so this clip thing. here is floating because we've got, uh, we're connected to the power supply. So I didn't want to damage my, my oscilloscope probe. So that's why it's a floating clip. And so it would give us some, uh, inaccurate information um, with in terms in relation to the positioning of the wave, uh, but um, I mean, when I when I clicked the the DC power, and I can show you actually. I'll just turn this off. Right, I'll just turn this off. And um, so ignore the all the uh, the electronic circuit here because it's for a separate project, but it's just to show you. So this is the bug boost converter, mm. and I need a couple of DC battery here. Hang on, uh, let me just grab them. Oh no, you're fine. Take your time. Yeah, this is all pre-recorded. This is the the benefit of pre-recording these sessions. So awesome. I'll just plug this in. 
Yeah, I did tweak my back a little bit. I think I pulled a muscle, so I might have to take a break in about 30 or 40 minutes anyways. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. No problems. Um, right. Just trying to hook it up the right way so I don't blow anything. No, you're fine. You take your time. I'm going to go over uh, my notes here because I got a, some questions for you. Let's see. Okay, so. Yeah, so I, um, I'd like to get into uh, some of the actual results for the stereo, the mini stereo amp board in a little bit, but um, that's for later. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna um, stop my power supply and just use the buck push converter here. So I'm just gonna get two clip leads. Um, so uh, there's the negative, right? And two negative. And then the, do I have a red? Mm, that'll do, so this is the positive. Oh, uh, yeah, you ran out of red, so you're using the green. It's okay. I've yeah, had to do that. exactly. Uh, and I'll turn it on. Yeah, so, um, so, 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 so. So we've got the power running here, right? Yeah, we've got the power running. Um Yeah, can you see the wave here then? Yeah. So now I'm gonna I'm just gonna hook my ground probe to the ground of the um the power, so which is um just trying to hold this. Oh you're you have a ground in your power supply? The green terminal? So what I'm gonna do is just take the this clip lead and then uh, connect it to the ground of the DC battery here. Oh, the DC battery, okay. Yeah. So here we go, so now the wave, now the wave is actually accurate. However, saying that, just gonna try, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so if I invert this, cause I think this is still wrong because the duty cycle should be actually yeah, so I think this is the right wave. But if it's I send still this, the, still the same. So you can see you can see it's slightly above now. So it's uh, well, actually, hang on. It's hard to make out exactly how, but yeah, it's the, it looks at at least the the waveform looks almost exactly the same. You can see the. I mean, it's still going. It's saying oh, wow. that it's, it's saying it's 180 volts. So is it are you is it like uh, picking up a lot more of the spike? Is that what's happening? Yeah, I think so. I think so, and I I'm not sure why we're getting like such a negative spike. But it, well, this makes sense because if we don't have the full waveform, and I'm seeing you know like four because I I was having it on the resolution of like fifty volts when I had it hooked up and it was lighting this, you know, uh, neon lamp pretty good and powering a load. Um, when I had that plugged in, not, you know, uh, with the neon lamp lit still, but still it was, uh, interesting because it, the waveform was reading a little bit lower than it should have been. Like it was around 40 or 35 and it, it, it seemed like it might have been more than that. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with the just the negative side of it. You know. Yeah, my and my multimeter uh, couldn't read it accurately either. The true RMS, I guess, was averaging out the signal and not capturing the spikes, <laughs> and it was reading at like five or six volts, like it was actually reading at a little bit of a loss. I was. I was like, maybe I have it hooked up in the wrong place, but no, I, it's just the, the multimeters. Um, I don't think they, 
that the ones that I have can can pick this up, and unless there's a, a different way of hooking it up that I I'm not aware of. Yeah. So so I think that this this is more the more accurate representation of the the dual fifth, where it's ninety four percent on the time and then six percent off. I think yeah, this is that what, makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. So I wonder, it's is is it just the the placement of the probe that may be like uh, picking it up lower than the zero line? Well, that's the thing I don't get, you see, because the the ground probe is actually connected to the negative, so we should we should have in theory quite a, a good um you see differential there, right? Yeah, let me just see if I can move this out. Hang on. Uh, no, no, you're good. That's yeah, that is perplexing. Yeah, so you sure. see the uh the He just cut out. Let's give him a moment, and he'll be back. So the the ground probe is 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 um is connected to the the negative here. So it's connected to the negative. Um. So we should, and then the 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 probe itself is connected to the collector. So we should really get um a good representation of of what's going on. Um. Uh, but again, you know, um. Um. This is this is what we're getting really. So Yeah, that's interesting. I mean at that at this point we we can't fully rely on these instruments, I guess, until we really yeah. understand what's going on here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was all the readings I was getting, I was like, there's no way that this this is powering up and the, the neon lamp is lighting at, at this low of a no. So I looked at the O scope and even Sometimes in the oscope, because you know the potentiometer I'm still using. I, I haven't replaced it with a resistor yet, and uh, it's finicky. You know, there's a there's slight range where it can be really, really tuned and then slightly detuned. You know. Right. Yeah. So I was like, well, there's no way that you know, even at this you know very, very tuned level, that it's 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 reading this level. It's 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 got to be some kind of inaccuracy. I don't know. It was confusing the heck out of me. And even the current was, uh, I mean, if we assume that the lowest potential, which is like what, what 60 volts or whatever that a neon lamp lights. And then we assume the current that I was getting was, um, reading accurate, which was slight, a slight loss. Actually, it was like one amp in and then 78 milliamps out <coughs> or not 78, but a uh, point 78 or something like that. <clears throat> it was a slight loss. So, uh, but when you calculate it, it's still uh, over unity. You know, it's still a lot coming out with the voltage being so high. So I don't know if that was something to do with my multimeter, you know, where I had the, the probe placed or what, but it, it was, it seemed like it was all very usable power. <laughs> You know, in a traditional transformer, you have, you know, uh, 10 volts going in and it's transforming the power up to, you know, uh, 100 volts or whatever times 10. You're going to divide the current by 10 as well, right? So yeah, that's, that's right. Leave you, yeah, that's not going to leave you a lot of room for powering a lot, you know, maybe a tiny bit, but not like this. <laughs> Yeah, and so what's you know that um, six watt LED lamp? So I actually uh, I also did a test with the the stereo amplifier. So um, I connected the you know the big coil. I connected this big coil here. You know the white coil. Yeah, the PoE. Um... Vortex coil yeah. frame. Yeah, what is called? Yeah. So I connected that to this the big stereo amplifier. So uh, with my function generator. So the um, the function generator was um, three. Uh, 
was 3.2 watts that was coming out of the function generator. The stereo amp was 8.5 watt. So we're talking 11.7 or 12 watt. And um, so you would expect that if you were to turn on a six watt LED, you would be less than 18 watt in total, if you like. Um, and, and, and this is this is probably to show here uh, a, a bit of a, um, how can I say, you know, it wasn't a successful test because when I, I replicated it, um, I got uh, with the light was 23 watt. Um, so it's way under unity. It's we're talking like uh, um, 12 watt um, extra. Um, so um, so I was really um, heartbroken on that one, to be fair. Um, so I think, Daniel Nunez, if you're watching us, uh, can you please get in touch and tell us how you set it up, right? <laughs> yeah. Because um, we've tried and, uh, well, I mean, I've tried uh, and and probably haven't tried everything. And obviously we'll, you know, we'll, um, we'll try other things because, I mean, this is an LED light, okay? So it's not an actual resistive load. And I remember Daniel Nunez, in one of his videos, he... Um, he had a, just a, a filament light bulb, uh, like a, a resistive load. Um, it, like he had, I think it was like a 60 watt light bulb or something like that. So he had he had a proper, proper heavy load. Um, this is just um, easy to work with. Um, and that's why I picked the LED light. It's a lot easier to work with and it's a lot more efficient. Um, but perhaps, perhaps I am going the wrong direction. So, um, um, it was because what I did actually, I took the PoE coil, and uh, so I've got um, I've got a current limiter, uh, which is uh, you know there's a lamp ballast that you you use for the they're like agricultural agricultural lamps, you know, for like for growing plants and what have you. You've got this lamp ballast. Right. And so this it's like a, a six amp uh, lamp ballast. So it's a kind of current limiter. Um, so it's got a huge coil in there. So I've got the current limiter, and then in line with it, I've put uh, a, a five hundred watt. Um, um, it's like a, a xenon light. So it's in line. So if there's a short, the the light will actually turn itself on. So then I've got it. Then it goes to a one to one transformer. Okay. Then it goes to my variac. Then I've got a one amp fuse just to make sure that if anything shorts, the, the one amp fuse would just blow right away. So I've got, I had that set up. And then I had me watt meter. And then I've put the PoE coil with the LED light straight into mains power. So we're talking 250 volt in the UK. And so I, obviously I turn it up progressively, you know, because it's, it's a zero point three milli wire, so you've got to make sure you don't you don't put more than four amps in that stuff, or you you fry everything. So um, so I turn the voltage slowly, slowly, and um, and I, I I set it up the Nunes open circuit, you know the way where you've got a uh, a capacitor uh, in the middle, so you've got a capacitor, and then you've got the the load in parallel to your capacitor. So that's how I, I had it set up. And, I believe he um, recommends a 2008 or HV capacitor or something. I got one in the the storage bin that I have somewhere, but it's like um, he recommends a 2000 HV capacitor. Is that uh, 2000 volt DC? Yeah. So actually, I used I used the similar specs. Um, it was um, a 2000 volt DC, and it was something like 14 nanofarad capacitor. It, it's a um, mm. um, what do you call them? A film capacitor. So it was okay, a good point. Yeah, because he didn't he didn't specify. So this is interesting. This is inf information that we can use. He didn't specify. He just said two thousand HV on the, on the diagram. So um, it, I'm sorry. Your, your results were were. Uh... No, you're right. Yeah, he didn't specify the capacitance, and that and that is probably um, um, a really important key information that we don't have because. Do you remember in one of his videos, he uh, he used a, sp a specific type of capacitance and he was able to create ozone out of his uh, 
PL recoil, and that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But we don't know the capacitance, so um, and I'm pretty sure the capacitor I've used, which is a 37 nanofarad, I'm pretty sure it's too big. I think it needs to be much smaller capacitor, um, much smaller capacitance. I'm pretty sure um, because the bigger your capacitance, the lower your frequency, mm -hmm. and the smaller your capacitance, the higher your frequency. So. Um, Bear in mind, even though you're putting, um, so my, my resonant frequency on the stereo amplifier was 4.5 kilohertz, but bear in mind your PoE coil and your capacitor, it still does an LC tank, so you still have a slightly different frequency out of what you're putting in. Um, but going back to the, the, the main experiment that I did, um, when I connected the PoE coil with the light to the mains power. So it's, uh, in the UK, it's uh, 50 Hertz and it's 250 volts. And so I had the open circuit uh, method uh, with the cap high voltage capacitor. And so bear in mind, the light is six watt. Um, <laughs> when I connected the, the watt meter, the load was nine watt. So it was a nine watt load. So there's absolutely zero over unity in 60 hertz, but we knew that, right? We knew that um, we're not, but what I wanted to know is what's the load on, a, on 50 hertz, on the 50 hertz PoE coil, what is the load? Like, is it, is it, is it efficient? Is it inefficient? But it's, it's just acting like a normal inductor uh, at 50 hertz. So, so. Right. Yeah. That's interesting because I, I you know, I, didn't get any kind of effect with the the Nunez method um, or otherwise with any of the other coils using the stereo amp other than the Mark one. But again, like it was only like I did get the 10 times with it, but it was only like at the mic, the millivolt level, right? As soon as I increased the gain just a little bit where it would lit something up on the board, um, it would just crash the stereo amp and, and shut down. Uh, denoting that there was way too much power, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was just uh, you know a fluke in the the multimeters, and I wasn't reading it accurately, and it wasn't working. That's very well possible. We still don't know how that you know fully works. I mean, we have the. I don't know if this makes any difference, but for the Jewel Thief, we have uh, the start of channel A and the end of channel B connected. Um, but we don't have that in the schematics for his stereo amp for the uh, open circuit method. Is that something that we could try maybe? Do you think that would help? You think maybe he left that out on accident? Because there's two different diagrams. Maybe there was a third one that was the final one. You know, there was a handwritten one and then there was one that was more professional and had the, the den denotations and, and some of the uh, text on it. Maybe there was a, another one that's missing that's the final one that has something else on it. Who knows? I don't know. I think you're right. I think we still need to play with the those different schematics because I can see I can see some amazing effects with the dual fifth, and we know we know the dual fifth is a special circuit, and yeah. um, some some people have actually some very intelligent people have actually done some tests and they they got um, over unity um, out of the dual fifth circuit. Um, but, um, I mean, for me, I don't really have, um, accurate instruments to actually measure the milliwatt. I think for me, if I was to get over unity, it'd have to be a few watts, you know, of extra power. And then I can say, yeah, well, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, because yeah, you, you know, you probably have about 20% inaccuracy in all the, you know, all the tests we do. Um, but. Um, saying that, the exciting um, uh, setup is with the 432 PoE advanced coil. You know, that's pretty cool. We're, we're getting some nice, nice results out of that. Um, I think the, I guess the sour pill, I suppose, for the, the 432 PoE is that if we use battery, when you think about you know, how much power you waste actually charging a battery. I think that's the problem because otherwise the 432 PoE coil is uh, 
it's quite efficient, um, you know, and uh, I'll show you later if you want. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome if you could do a demonstration of the, the new advanced version three coil that you reverse engineered. That That is some handy, hand crafty work there. I know you spent months on it and it looks amazing and I'm really excited uh, to, to make one myself and to see, you know, um, the effects of these coils because that is like the penultimate, you know, like that's, in my opinion, that that's maybe the, the coil that we need as a, um, and I was just theorizing this last night. I was like, so if we're going to make a, a transportation system, we want to maximize the efficiency as much as possible. So how do we do that? We have to have some kind of frame if possible a poe vortex frame a big one with a nested advanced version three in the center right we need to have that in the center picking up all the uh, available energy like at the core i think it's a possibility ben because um i i think um even i'm still learning about geometry and in coil and you know, we were talking about that, the, the ratio, the, you know, I think we, we were talking about the, 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 the resonant frequency of the coil, the geometry. And um, interestingly with this, this, you know, this advanced 432 coil, um, 432 hertz is actually a cosmic, um, like a cosmic frequency. Um, and if you look at Malcolm Bendel's work, um, his uh, uh, plasmoid generator is a four inch, three inch, two inch sphere, which is the, the resonance chamber. And yeah, the, yeah. the stud, the stud is, is tuned at 432, 432 hertz. Um, so it's, uh, I think it's a la note, you know, do re mi fa so la. I think it's it's this note, and don't quote me exactly on that, but I think it's this one. And so, I mean, he's, you know, Malcolm, Malcolm Bendel is a genius. Um, um, and, um, you know, uh, but he's also thinking about geometry. He's also thinking about uh, resonant frequency. So I think for our coil setup, we've, we've got to think about that. And I, I, I'm guilty of it. I haven't really thought a lot of it, and I've, I've tried. And I know a lot of people use phi, so you know um, phi um, because um, they're talking about the ratio. For example, you know your the ratio between your fingers is a phi length, and then your your hand, your your arm is a phi ratio. Um, everything your ear is a phi ratio. All sorts of um, so there's, there's there's some kind of geometry that um, people are talking about. Uh, and there's 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 some controversies because some people say oh you should be using phi and then other people people say oh you should be using the num number nine which is which is a a sacred number you should always be using nine um, uh, some some devices for example um, it, it's 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 just a, a multiple of nine so it it it'd it be eighteen turns counterclockwise or nine turns counterclockwise um, and then the direction of the turns as well so um, 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 you know, uh, I've been um, um, winding my coil counterclockwise because when, when you use your drill, your chuck, and when you, you spin clockwise, your coil actually spins counterclockwise. So if you look from the start of your wire, it actually goes counterclockwise, um, which apparently is, is a good thing. Um, so I've, I've, I've been, I've seen people using counterclockwise turns for their their setup. Um, so I think, yeah, I think there's a lot to think about. And um, yeah, I think, uh, but definitely that 432 was um, agonizing. <laughs> it was, it took me weeks and weeks of, um, I'll show you actually what it looks like. Uh, let me just see. Yeah, here, let me blow up uh, to solo so we can get a look at this remarkable thing oops sorry that's so beautiful that's awesome so let me just see uh, i'm gonna try not to disconnect my camera this time and then so there it is and that you know as as complex and and uh painstaking as it looks and is to to wind this one 
I like to remind people, don't be too intimidated because you're doing it one at a, you can do it a little bit at a time with this one. It's not like you're wiring a whole bundle and you have to set it aside and you're worried about the bundle being bent or anything, you know, you can kind of like do one at a time, right? Yeah. So the, the way, the way I've done, so you can see there's three different, um, um, colors. So there's a, a gold color, there's a blue color and there's a red color. And the way I've done it is um, I had three rods. One, one rod had uh, 100 meters, so I don't know how, how much is in feet, but I had 100 meters of yellow, 100 meters of red, 100 meters of blue. And then, so you know then the way we, we wind the coil, uh, we, do, we start with counterclock, right? And then we, we get to the starting point, then we do we do uh, uh, clockwise on the other side, right? So, right. What, so what I've done is you do your counterclock turns mm -hmm. and then when you get to your starting point, you stop there. And so what I've done is I've put a little bit of glue, if you like. And so you do this from your free, your free wires. So four, three, two is four steps. So you, you jump over and you go one, two, three, four. So that's your four. You have three wires, um, and then I think the two is actually two inch uh, ring. I think that's what it is. Um, and so, so what I did is I did the counterclock for all three wires. Oh, once so I you stopped before doing the bend and just did the count uh, the the first wind for all three before you bent it exactly and and that's the key so then they weave you can see the weave so i've got a yellow a blue i've and, and then it goes yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue and then you've got red blue red blue red blue red blue yeah because so, you want that that weave interference pattern there wow. right exactly that's yeah so you want you want the weave how did you figure that out that is so cool and so there's six layers on there, and that is exactly 51 meters per wire. So I don't know what's in, in feet, Ben, but you'll, you'll work it out. That is really remarkable work, Michael. I am very impressed with that. <laughs> that is so cool. Your spatial reasoning is top notch. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> the one, I've got a couple of tips for people who want to replicate this. Um, one tip is, when you when you have your frame and and then feel free to give away this frame um it's not for resale because i don't have uh licenses to sell those but i can give them away so those the 3d print if you want to give it to your audience uh i'll for be sure. more than happy yeah. um and a, a tip that i've got is on the side here on the side of the frame i've i've put in a marker red blue yellow so I know where my red starts, I know where my blue starts, I know, I know where my yellow starts. Oh, and then the other thing I've done is inside the frame, I've written in a black marker the direction of my counter turn. Because what happens is when you start layering it up, you don't know where's the top, you don't know where's the bottom anymore. <laughs> yeah, you kind of lose track, huh? You lose track of where, where's the top, where's the bottom. So I've got, I've got inside on the white frame, I've got an arrow and it says counterclockwise. So I know when I get to here, I just need to look at my arrow to see where I am. And then, hmm. and then once I've done my, all my counterclock turn, I don't need to do my clock, so I'll go back down on the other side. And I do all three, and then I go back to my starting point, finish all three, and then I'll start again with the free cold wire, and I do my, like, one at a time. So I would do my yellow, I do all my counterclock, go back to where so my yellow is. When you start the bend, that you do the same order as you, you uh, when you started, right? So if you started with red, the first one that you would bend is red, and go in the same order so it doesn't matter so much that's what mm. that's what i've noticed um as long as you do all three wires counterclock first uh -huh. and then and then after that you do the, your clock turn after that so let's see let's say i start with the red i do my red mm. and i get to the start point i stop here i put some 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 hot glue then i do my blue 
do my counterclock, go back to the starting point, stop there. And then I do my red, I go back, I do counterclock, go back to my starting point. Once I've got my free, my free wires, counterclock, then I'm going to start to do my clockwise, which is the bend, like you, you call it, the, the, or interference pattern, right? So Yeah, um, the interference pattern. Interference pattern, uh, that's right. So then when you're ready to do that, you grab any wire, because if you think about it, the, each wire will always go into the same slot. So my yellow will always go into my yellow slot, no matter what happens. Right. So every time that but, one over three up pattern, I believe it, you said one over or four up. One over four up. Four up. Okay. Four three two one over four up three wires. So yellow over four up, wow. and then over four up, over four up, over four up, and then blue same over four up. And what did you say was the two? You said the the three wires for so I, i'm pretty sure the two is actually two inch two inch uh, ring so this this ring here is two inch so this what diameter is here is two inch oh is, is it two inch right now or is it does it need to be adjusted so this this ring here is two inch so oh, the is. last okay. the last layer is probably almost near two inch if you like Okay, so it is. It's following. The, if if that's the the secret to why it's called a four thirty two coil, and I think it is. I think you figure you figured all this out. Wow, you just you you uh, are really solving the mystery here. <laughs> this is awesome. This is really cool. And you can see the way the the light the light um, bounces off, um, and you can see this is actually how the. Um, I would say the magnetic field actually flows. Um, um, I'm, I've got I've got a feeling this is how it would look like. It's just um, that's so cool. I mean, it, yeah, it's I really mean, really cool. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense because light is just you know like per perturbations in the ether. So yeah, light light, light is light is um, light is um, photons and photons are. Um, a particle of energy right yeah so it no that that makes sense why you would you would uh see kind of like the path flow yeah with the reflection of the coil i mean this that i mean this yeah. is what i think you know i mean yeah it's still just a theory but it, it's an interesting yeah. theory and i i wouldn't be surprised if you're onto something here honestly <laughs> Oh, that's very kind, Ben. Um, I had I had uh, hooked it up with a, a Slayer exciter, um, so I can run a like a neon light, like a neon lamp. So you, you get like uh, just about a thousand volts, but um, you know the the little spark is is like a milli a milli wide. It's tiny little spark, but it it's enough to light up the neon light and then next to it is just the the modified uh Nunes dual fifth uh which is which is the one that um you know we've we've gone over so um so this 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 one is the same as this one here it's exactly the same setup nice you know, you're able uh, to power you're able to power that load and light the the neon lamp with the the amount of voltage you have going into there no, so uh, sorry for this year. Yeah. Or do, so, when you turn on the load, does the neon lamp shut off? So at the minute we've got the load, we've got a oh, six watt light bulb. Got a six watt yeah. light bulb. Got two hundred and seventy LEDs. Wow. And we've got the neon lamp, um, and that's about five watt ish. Uh, 18 volt, 18.14 volt at 260 milliamps. So that's about five watts going in. Yeah, uh, 18. And, yeah. And what did you calculate the wattage coming out to be? So we've got 4.7 watt uh, being used right now. 4.7 watt. Uh, the light, I would say, it's a good. 
60-70% bright, uh, at least being uh, quite pessimistic here, but I would say 60-70% bright. And then we've got 270 LEDs and we've got the neon. Um, so it is it is a very, very, very efficient efficient setup to be fair. Yeah, it's very efficient, but it's not um, like like you mentioned earlier. It's not actually achieving over unity, and this no. is important because uh, these coils are capable of achieving over unity. So that yeah. tells me maybe maybe we have some kind of spacing issue or yeah. or something like that. And you know yeah. why I specifically say this is because I did um, objectively uh, get extra energy, extra very extra usable energy coming out of the stereo amp receiver method using not the closed circuit. And specifically, that coil has very, very close spacing. And I'm wondering now if, if the spacing has something to do with the amount of energy efficiency in the system. Right, yeah. But um, uh, that brings me to another question that I had. Uh, let's see. I've just lost, uh, I've just lost the... Um... <clears throat> The web, the the webcam, uh, um, like a, a kind of holder. Just one sec, Ben. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, well, it's gone. Great. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just gonna have to hold the the webcam like this. But well, if if you want to take a break and pause, you know, um, we could do that. And, and yeah, we'll, should, should we take a recess, five minute break, or something? Yeah, five ten minutes. Uh, however, okay. just let me know when you're ready and back because I, I need to take a break as well. So I'm gonna pause it. Perfect. I love it. Yeah, it's it's a, a really cool one. I'll put it up on Patreon. I got a little video. He's uh, it. He, he's my yeah, <laughs> So did you see his friend and mate as well? Yeah, he did. It it appears uh, she she's or at least it looks like a female. Is it's she really younger? Uh maybe younger maybe a little it, she's a little smaller so i think she's a, it's a female yeah well, this is awesome yeah it's really it's really cool so you you hooked this up to uh an exciter slayer circuit you said yeah so i've just disconnected the slayer exciter here and i've connected back to the nunez um the nunez modified dual thief because I wanted to show you uh, the efficiency of the LED light. Nice. Yeah. Let's compare the uh, input to the output on this one. Because yeah. this, this should be, we're utilizing three channels. And it was always my theory that three channels would be the ideal because you have, you know, the, uh, um, the two positive and one negative aspect of the 369 that you see in Vortex Math. So you know what I mean? Like two channels seemed like a good start, but I think it was always uh, going to end at three. So for, you know, for the way I hooked it up, there's, um, there's actually um, two wires that are just connected to a neon lamp. Um, so one thing interesting I found actually for this 442 coil then is if I disconnect the the LED light for a minute, uh, because what I wanted to show you is if I connect uh, two neon lights, which have the same uh, the, the same load and the same um, voltage as well, two identical neon lights, um, they actually light up both, uh, which is quite interesting because, I mean, yes, you, you know, we are using um, more current okay so but it's really interesting that with the 432 you're able to actually run two load at the same time i've never seen that before you know because what's happening is when you create your dipole or when you create your magnetic field you can't take from it if you take from your dipole you you kill the system so you know it's always been oh don't touch the dipole because um you, you, need, you need to let your dipole running so you can have uh, your extra system, um, um, you know, being able to function properly. But in this, I find that interesting that you can have the two neon light running at the same time off separate wires 
from the 432. So I'm going to see if I can show you what I mean. Um, so see if I can. So hang on, let me just try to uh, switch the wires here, maybe. Let me just try to. So you have switch. three input or three start wires and three end wires. That's what you ended up with. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I've got I've got six wires, but for the you know the Winners modified jaw fifth, there's only four wires. So how so would you look up the third wire? I know traditionally you have like one wire for the, the positive and one wire for the negative. Would you have two positive and one negative or something like that? So what I did is my third wire, which is the yellow. So the start and the end of the yellow actually only go to a neon light. That's all it does. It, it oh, really so that's like a, oh, it's an output. Okay. Yeah, an output. it's an output. Exactly. That's, that's the way to, you see this one now is turned on for some reason. I don't know why. Wow, that's yeah. cool. You can see both of them here are, are, are on, right? Yeah. So this, this is really strange. Like I've never seen that before. The fact that your, your, I guess your dipole and then your, your output, they're both on. So I've, I've never actually seen that before. I've never seen, this is, this is something to do with this coil. I've, I mean, yes, we are using, you know, we're using quite, um, quite a lot of current, 169 milliamp at 11 volt, but I'm still amazed that you can, you can get two output from this. I so what you're it. saying is, right. So what you're saying is you, even though the coil has an uh, extreme ability to step up the voltage, uh, from 11 to light that one neon to light two, it would destroy the first, uh, yeah. Exactly, it would destroy your dipole. So your, if 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 this neon, um, uh, in normal setup, one neon would would kill the other neon. If you like, the the current would flow one either one direction or flow the other way. But here, what we're saying is in the four three two, there's some strange things happening, um, and we are at uh, one point two. Uh, let me check the frequency here. Then hang on. Do you think that maybe? is an indication that this is more of a system that the uh, output is based on the load still we have 25 kilohertz here ben so this is uh, let me just double check here hang on 25 yeah yeah we have 25 kilohertz and again this this is the wrong this is the wrong wave so if i invert it and i don't know why i have to invert it ben but yeah so it should it should look like this but we're still at 24 kilohertz and we're getting we're getting this is this is really strange. The fact we're getting two neon off this, the the one coil because, as we discussed, the current would flow either here or here, but it wouldn't flow in both places at the same time. And here it's happening, so I it's don't all, know yeah, why. It's almost like extra energy that it's able. It's to almost like extra energy. energy, but even even if it's not extra energy, it, the fact that you're able to make your, perhaps this system is so balanced because the, the wires are the exact same length, you know? Yeah. Um, they're the exact same length, perhaps because your system is so balanced, it's able to actually flow current back and forth in, in two different locations. I've never seen that before. So that's one, one, one effect that we should really investigate why, I mean, yes, it is the same load, right? We've got a 60 volt neon light they're both 60 volt, and yes, maybe this one looks slightly brighter, but I'm still amazed to see this happening because I've never ever seen that before off one coil. You know, if we have like a, a magnetic induction coil, you know, mm -hmm. um, something like this, would that would that work? Hang on. Yeah, maybe. something like oh, this, yeah. right? So there, okay, we know, okay, fair enough, it's a magnetic induction, and, and we're able to pump, um, uh, um, extra light out of your load. And in fact, my voltage is going down as I do this. So um, if I, yeah, we're not seeing any uh, current reduction or voltage. We're, we're seeing a, a small voltage reduction and no, no current drop. And the, the neon are not, they're not um, getting dimmer the neon lamp or, or they are the same brightness. So 
you know, wow. we are getting strange things happening that people need to investigate because um, this is a very special coil. And I, you know, Ben, the, the pattern that uh, Daniel and Erica filed, it looks really similar to the 432 POE coil. I don't know if it yeah. is, but it looks really similar because they are weaved. The weaved coils. Um, That's what I was thinking exactly. I, it, it has to be either this or a variation um, thereof. I, yeah. I have no idea. I have to look into yeah. it further. But yeah, it, it, it definitely looks like the interweaved pattern here that we see. Um, and if you look at their patent and the, the schematics that they provide for the coil. Um, I have a question for you. Um, have you experienced with the neon lamp any uh, weird colors, specifically purple or pink? Yes, I did, but only when I was using the... So this, this neon lamp I've got here, they are 60 volts. Um, mm. And the the other neon lamps, lamps I bought, that I bought them from Russia and the 160 volt neon lamp. And they are, they're made with um, um, a different gas and the, the light bulb, they glow slightly bluish um um so i don't know um i don't know why but they, they blow a different color than those so is it just the gas or are we getting actually radiant energy off off of this i'm not sure well i have a video to show you if you want to take a look at some evidence that i believe it's evidence of ball lightning and now yes I'll please go that. ahead so let me present this video that i have um, real quick. All right. channel B. Now Michael recommends a 2 watt resistor which is what we will up be upgrading to soon but for now this actually seems to work quite well and as you can see it doesn't matter that we have the spacing inaccurate um, or it doesn't matter if we only have 22 wires instead of our full 24 as you'll see in a minute we turn it on and we still get resonance. Now, just that a little bit. There we go. Notice now how dim it is. Able to power this it's very dim and it's still really, really orange. Lamp with right? just 12 volts yeah. and 0 0.04 amps. This is actually absolutely incredible. Um, this is significant in so many different ways. As you can see here on the oscilloscope, we are uh, utilizing the 50 volt range and it's almost at the top here. So we are getting, um, I'm assuming, around at least 40 volts, if not more. And I'm not sure what the current is. We will have to monitor that. Um, we might actually be getting a little bit more voltage than what we see here. My oscilloscope might not be as accurate as I'd like it to be in this case. Either way, we are still able to power this 90 volt neon lamp with only 12 volts of power and 0 0.04 amps, which is absolutely incredible. You can hear it. It's actually humming. That's it, because it's in resonance. This is the same exact waveform Michael's getting, same exact waveform that Daniel Nunez got and some of his research from his coil designs. And all I did is exactly what Michael did and clipped this oscilloscope um, clamp right to the edge of the neon bulb. Our next test will be hooking up a larger load to the system so you can see I kind of prepped a larger array of LED lights along with everything I can plug into. I got the pulse width modulator just to add some kind of load. I got this 12 volt uh, stepper motor which should provide a lot more of a load as well as this uh, 9 to 12, or I'm sorry, 9 to, uh, uh, sorry, 3 to 9 volt fan right here. So we're gonna hook up a little bit more to the system and see 
just how well it does. But look, this is still, it's not shining as bright as it needs to be. This is very, very dim, but it's just enough to show that it's doing something very unusual. And if I tune into this a little bit more, I might be able to get that um, to shine a little bit brighter. It's the potentiometer, really, that is our limitation here. It keeps on being finicky. Um, it's very sensitive. Now, that is very unusual, and I've never seen that happen with the Tesla coil when this thing lights up. Yeah, amazing work, Ben. Really, really amazing work. I'm, um, I'm really well done. I'm proud of you. Um, I think one tip you could do is once you've got your resonance, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you were using your potentiometer. So once you've found resonance, you just unplug your pot, and then you, you measure the... Uh, resistance of your potentiometer so let's say it uh -huh. says let's say it says 10 kilo ohm and then you replace your potentiometer with a 10k 2 watt resistor and put it where your pot was and so what happens is then you can crank up the power and you don't worry if you're gonna burn your your resistor okay because your your variable potentiometer is a lot more expensive and it will it will fry very quickly as soon as you start uh, increasing the load. So, for example, you know, earlier I was showing the six watt light bulb um, yeah. running. Um, so, before that, I had just used the neon light technique where you can find resonance with the neon light bulb. And then, and then once I've got resonance, I'd measure the, the resistance of your variable potentiometer. And then I'd replace it with. Um, just a resistor, so uh, a two watt minimum resistor uh, instead of your pot, and then and then what happens is you've always got resonance because you've got the right resistance that goes to your base of your transistor, and um, um, then instead of the neon lamp, you can replace your neon lamp with a six watt light bulb and crank up the power, and then you'll you'll have your your um, high voltage light bulb turning on just like me. So um, really well done. I think it shows that the more power you start putting in and the more interesting things starts to become. I think we, you know, we are looking for efficiency. Yes, we are. But I think interesting things happens when you're at high frequency and high voltage, just like Nikola Tes Tesla used to do it. He used to always play with high frequency, high voltage. Uh, but I mean, he used to play like with big toys, you know, but we are doing similar things here. We're playing with high voltage and we're playing with high frequency. So yeah, kudos to you. It's, it's really good work. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. This is when I seen this, cause I knew it, you know, the potentiometer is a little finicky and, and, uh, sometimes, uh, especially with this, uh, other, uh, the coils that are, have to have imperfections in them. It seems like it's it's really hard to for the potentiometer to exactly tune in. Yeah. Um. So, uh, it happens and it flicks and it flickers yeah. real fast sometimes. Yeah. And I seen it. It's like it's orange, it's orange, it's bright orange, and all of a sudden it's it's pink. 
you know? <laughs> and I'm like, what? I, I don't know. That's something that's very unusual. And I think that, um, that might indicate, uh, you know, like maybe a finely tuned area of the, the frequency range. I have no idea, but it's very interesting. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Really cool. We, ha we haven't even tried to um, play with adding ground, you know, and um, um, I've, I've heard of, of people using multiple grounds, so they don't use one ground connection, they use two ground connections in their system. And um, I've got, I've cut in my backyard, I, I planted, so I had to look at the, uh, you know, the drainage system and make sure I don't, mm -hmm. I don't heat a pipe or, you know, and the yeah. water, it, it was such a faff, honestly, just to uh, get in touch with the local council and try to ask them. And so I'm the paying money uh, to get the plants for the, the drains. So I had to pay money, right? And then, um, mm -hmm. Then they gave me an email with like um, some some plans to open and um, um, for the water I didn't get anything. They were like, yeah, it's it's not there, what have you? But um, um, I ended up planting two um, two copper rods in my backyard. Um, they are uh, more they are about three feet long, so I've planted them on on each side of my backyard. Um, and, Did you just like uh, drive them in with like a, a hammer or something? A huge, huge hammer, like super, super heavy. And I was sweating so much, just planting it in. And then we're talking meters and meters of wire drilling through concrete. So I had to drill through the my garage wall with a, it's oh, like wow. a, one of those masonry drill bits. Uh, they're like, um, one one meter long drill bit or 1.5 meter long drill bit and i was drilling through the wall of my garage into my little uh, little study room and um then i put the the ground cables in there so i've got two different ground wires um oh, so cool that is yeah so i have cool. seen i have seen uh neon lights turning white as as you start plugging the ground uh uh uh, you know, ground um, into this setup. But again, um, you know, it's um, like, it, you know, I think we, we've got to put a, another disclaimer here, you know, um, just do it on your own risk. You know? <laughs> yeah, because it could be output, like at that point, if you're grounded with two different terminals, I can imagine if you're tuned in just right, you could be enhancing maybe a hundred times or 400 times your output who knows yeah i think so you see i, I think so I, I think uh you i mean we know we know from the um the tesla magnifying transmitter setup that i did that um um you know we, we had a one wire connection but um we can use the gra uh, like just ground roads to actually send electricity through the ground we know we can do that uh and um so you're right so it, it can pick up um extra power that's so cool i can't wait till uh we hear about your updates from that experiment um, yeah <laughs> so uh moving on from uh the last question i had um do you have any uh, other ideas to further develop the rodent coil or any plans uh for it at this time um so uh let me just turn the light back on here um so i had i have i had seen um don't know why this camera is moving hang on i'm trying to is this thing broken now hang on let me see if i can rotate it uh, it's a bit of a wonky setup hang on okay. it's okay yeah okay so I had seen, uh, I'm going to turn this off. I had seen um, Daniel Nunes um, adding this uh, this wire here in one of his, um, he, he calls it a wormhole. So I tried to actually add this wire. And you can see actually I've just put a tape on the output here. Um, wire. Yeah, that was that leads into my next question about the wormhole coil. So, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about the wormhole coil and what what it's. Uh, is there any unique effects that it, it was supposed to, supposedly invented for? Or 
I don't even know anything about it, to be honest. So the wormhole coil is the coil that Daniel had used to prove over Unity. So, oh. so he had three or four videos, and one of them when when he said, "Okay, this is this is the 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 deciding moment." It was a wormhole coil, and I've got, um, I've I've built one. Um, there's there's over a thousand wires on this thing. There's um. So there it is here. So this is the wormhole coil, and there's there's over a thousand a thousand wires in here, and it all oh, adds. So to that's so, okay. So it's and it's doubled. So how? It, yeah. How exactly is that wound? It all adds to number nine. It's to all those wires, all of them. They add to number nine. There's twelve hundred and some wires in there. So it's this this. There's 24 wires, mm -hmm. and they're by filer, and there's, I think there's 24 groups of wires, um, so there are groups of 24, so each, you can see one here, but there's actually 24 wires in that one bundle, so there's 24 wires times, um, I think it's 24, um, um, uh, it all adds up to uh, over a thousand wires so they are they're basically um you can see there's um it, it looks like a bifiler if you like if you can see it here it looks like a bifiler but in fact it's yeah. two groups of 24 wires that measures around a meter long so and each group has 24 wires it, so this this so you can see the bifiler here there's two wires here uh-huh. You can see them, yeah? Yeah. So each each of those wires have twenty-four wires inside. So they so it's a group of twenty-four wires, each of them. Each of them, okay. Each of them have twenty-four wires of point two milli, two five five. And then each of them is about a meter long, and there's twenty-four of them and twenty-four of them. And then you do one loop. And then this is your group. And then you do the other, the counterclock, this is your other group. And then you do that for all of them. And you end up with the wormhole coil. And Daniel says there's multiple ways to hook them up. Um, uh, depending on, Daniel said there's two ways to hook it up. You can hook it up for voltage. So you, you, can, you can get high voltage for light, light lighting. And then, or you can hook it up for, Current, so you'd have a high current, low voltage, and that could be for um, well, high current. You'd get a, I think you'd get a bigger magnetic field, but I'm not too sure what would be the purpose of the high current, low voltage. Um, maybe for induction heating, you know, for uh, induction, uh, but and then on top of the, on top of those groups, then you have. Um, this is like the rodent coil, and I think Daniel called, called this the unification coil because you have you have the ABA coil, modified ABA coil, which is which is a kind of bifiler with you know we're talking loads and loads of wires coming out of it, and then you have the the rodent coil on top, which is the star configuration. So it's every six, so you go one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you go up, you up, down, up down and go every six and you end up with like a, a really a, like a star shape or like a uh, yeah it's, it's like a, a star looking shape but it 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 goes up down up down up down so you can't six you go down you count six you go up and down and you count six and up and down and you go like this um but for me i did i did one counterclockwise star and then i did one clockwise star so you can see this barely enough space to fit my index finger here barely enough space so you see it's pretty 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 tight but this is the wormhole coil um the only problem is i was a bit too ambitious is um i think i think daniel had um half of the wires and i, I went twice as much i always have to do complicate my life a bit more so um so there's a you can see i've done one of the soldering here, 
uh, this is uh, bundles of 24, 24 wires. Um, and this took me over an hour just to do this of soldering because it's so finicky and so small. So imagine doing this beast. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. That's, that. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's um, uh, kind of what I was hinting uh, or, or um, uh, theorizing or wondering about is um, uh, the more uh, wires you have, you know, more channels or more pickups that you have built into the coil, I think the more efficiency you might get out of it like this. So you, you know, you having all these pickups and different, you know, like wires that you can use as potential outputs, right? So, um, so we know that um, in, in standard um, um, electrical engineering way that the more wire you have, the more impedance you have, and the more impedance you have, every time you increase your frequency, you get more impedance. So I think the trick of this setup is actually capacitance. I think that um, um, there, because the the way it's set up, it's um, it's going back to the pancake coil of Nikola Tesla, where Nikola Tesla had figured out that um, um, if you had the current going in two directions at the same time um, that um, there's some strange things happening. And I think probably we could probably get um, some very good efficiency by adding capacitance to this. So because we have a huge amount of impedance, uh, we're talking uh, hundreds and hundreds of ohms of resi resistance, um, I think that um, we need to use capacitance to reduce that impedance um, and uh, be able to get some kind of output because it's a huge impedance. So, um, so that that's the that's the issue is if being able to figure out what capacitance we're going to need to uh, reduce this high impedance. Um, so yeah, so I mean it's work in progress, you know. Um, um, I'm in soldering all those wires. I still need to figure out um, how can I get the highest voltage possible, um, and um, and then then I'm going to have to commit for it. I'm going to have to commit and actually solder all those wires together. And there could be a risk where you know I could get it wrong. So imagine spending hours and hours and hours of your time. Um, but again, it's um, it's for research, uh, research and development. So. Um, it'd be interesting to see what kind of um, output you can get. Um, again, we would have to play with the capacitance because this is just uh, pure impedance. So, um, you know, you wouldn't be able to feed um, very much power into this. Um, so we're probably going to need a lot of capacitance um, and clever way of hooking it up. Um, and possibly, who knows, possibly maybe a spark gap um, um, just uh, to be able to push the power through the coil. Um, so I'm not sure. But um, I guess the next step would be to work on this, hook it up a way to uh, get super high voltage. Um, I think Daniel showed that um, uh, he could get ozone <laughs> out of this thing. So, I mean, to get ozone out of just um, the wormhole coil is incredible just on its own because um, it means that you've got some kind of plasma flying. Um, so um, it's just a bit, um, it's amazing just to be able to think that he, he got ozone coming out of this. Um, and just on its own just is a really interesting effect. Um, getting the zone out of this, it would be incredible. Um, but then the next thing is, why do you get ozone out of that, right? Is it some kind of plasma power coming out of it? You know, is exactly. it, you know, is it something that Nathan plays with? You know, the the plasma or the 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 high voltage. Um, it's before, you know, before sparking. It's just uh, kind of plasma. So. 
I mean, that would definitely interest Nathan, the fact that there's ozone coming out of that. Nathan probably would be like all over, right? He'd be like, oh, I need to build a wormhole coil, man. <laughs> Nathan, um, actually, I don't know if you saw it, but he hooked up a Tesla coil to his rodent coil and got it to resonate with the coil uh, and actually transmit uh, a little bit of energy uh, slightly, you know, wirelessly. So that was really cool. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, so, I'm wondering if now if this is like the ultimate uh, design, like this kind of coil combined with a Tesla coil to uh, override the impedance uh, factor, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. This, this is the issue. So we're going to have to use capacitance to uh, get rid of impedance because this is an enormous amount of impedance. And the, so you see the higher frequency you go. So let's say you have one ohm. Uh, resistor, okay, um, and let's say you can put, I don't know, let's say you can put 100 milliamps, something like that, um, you know, at 10 volts. The higher frequency you go, the less current you'll be able to push through, uh, but if you have too much, too much resistance, the higher frequency you go and the less voltage you can push up. So the trick is capacitance. So you have to find the right balance of capacitance and resistance to be able to have this kind of um, almost um, zero resistance. Um, and I think Tesla was playing with spark gaps. Um, and I don't know what spark gaps have to do with um, like a fast discharge into your coil. Does it, does it actually um, uh, reduce the impedance to zero? Um, is that fast discharge spark gap with a capacitor with this, uh, with a huge high impedance coil would, would actually produce um, over unity? I'm not sure, but it's something to explore, you know, it's something to explore. Well, that's very, very good work with that coil. That's uh, beyond me, honestly. I don't think I would be personally be able to wind that thing. It looks very complicated. Yeah, it looks like a living creature, doesn't it? Like a, a kind of jellyfish or, um, you know, a sea creature or something. It um, does. Have you done any testing with it at all or even like tested the resistance like in ohms or whatever? So, no, and I, I'm, I'm afraid of testing the resistance because I know it's going to be absolutely enormous resistance. And, <laughs> and, yeah, and the only way to get past the resistance, especially when you start going at, you know, above one kilohertz, uh, you know, the more resistance you have, the higher frequency, the highest impedance you get. So basically nothing can get through, no voltage, no current can get through. So the trick of this is definitely capacitance. And do you remember Daniel was like, oh, you know, he, he was saying he tried different types of capacitors until he found one that was allowing him to produce ozone. So the trick is to find the right capacitance. And there's, there's some really complex charts on the internet about calculating, you know, the, the, the your least uh, resistance uh, by adding some capacitance. But Daniel was able to produce ozone with a, a very specific type of uh, capacitance. So, uh, and he said he had to change different times to find the right capacitor to get ozone out of this. So, so once you get ozone, you've got higher voltage. You, you know, you've got a huge amount of high voltage, um, and and maybe that's that would be maybe the the, the right direction to go into uh, his research. Perhaps um, this is just my speculation, of course. But no, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. You are on to a lot of uh, in, important breakthroughs here. Um, so I know this goes into my next question is. Have you, uh, like, because I haven't been able to um, measure for ozone. I, I can't afford a detector. So I, you know, I leave my door open and I test in short bursts just in haste. But have you experienced or have you been able to measure any detectable ozone with any of the coils that you've been testing? No, um, I have not been able um, to, to get any ozone out of any of the coils, even though I'm getting high voltage, right? Um, but um, I'm guessing that I would need to um, get 
uh, maybe a similar capacity that Daniel had because um, the other thing is, I've got to say that um, could it be that I'm not pushing enough power into those coils and that's why I'm not getting ozone out because we know, yeah. we know that you need to get a certain threshold of power before you can produce ozone. Yeah, that that's a that's an important thing um, to consider too. With that, the power input needs to be above a certain threshold. So yeah, so I think that um, I think that I'm not pushing enough power to get any ozone out, um, and I don't know how many watts of power um, you know you need to push through. And I think I would probably be able to get ozone out with a, a stereo amplifier uh, and maybe not looking at the power consum consumption really, but just trying to get ozone right. out. And I know uh, some, of, some of these like uh, free energy systems, um, like uh, especially uh, with some people describing what they've experienced with the rodent coil uh, and their co different configurations, some of it's based on the actual amount of load you have too. So if you have too small of a load, you might not be able to reach that exactly. threshold as well. Yeah, exactly. I think you're spot on there, uh, Ben. I think that um, I, th I think you, you need to have a, a, a power threshold before you can actually see things uh, happening. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm actually going to take another quick break to eat real quick, if that's okay. And then we can yeah, yeah. All right, I'm back. Ah. Hey, Ben. Did you have your dinner? Uh, yes, I did. It was delicious. Thank you to my beautiful gift friend. It was very delicious. Um... I just had a couple more questions for you. That's all. Um, and then an idea that I'd like to propose and see what you had um, to see what you you think about it. Yeah, so Ben, um, just wanted to show you. So this is the free watt uh, light bulb, and it's using five volt, uh, fifty milliamp. Oh wow, five volt, fifty milliamp. Yeah. Actually, this is fifty eight milliamp, five point seven two volt, fifty eight milliamps. And oh, it I is really, yeah, yeah, it's really, really bright, um, three watt light bulb. Um, so this is, this is really efficient lighting. That's really cool. And that's using the, uh, exciter circuit and the modified jewel thief. Um, the modified jewel thief um, with the 432 coil. And oh, you don't have it hooked up. Go on. I was saying you don't have it hooked up to the other circuit on the other the other um. Train. No, no, no. So this one, the the Slayer Exciter circuit, I haven't. This it's not hooked up. It's just on the uh, modified. Daniel Nunes, oh. so just just on the Jewel Fifth one, um, yeah. we're getting this is a a three watt light bulb. It's really 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 bright. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here. That's yeah, five, we can. It's really yeah. <laughs> five, it's almost hard to look at. Yeah, it's five point seven volt at fifty eight milliamps, so times zero point zero five eight. So we're using zero point three watt. And it's really, really, really bright uh, LED light bulb. And we're getting some extra, extra um, like uh, lighting out of that. Uh, in fact, the extra lighting is reducing the voltage. Um, so 
it was at 5.8 volt and now it's at 5.7 volt um, with the really really bright LED. So so that's the with the four free to coil. So it's a I think it's a really efficient way to have a night light. Um, it's I mean it's going to be amazing to have that as a night light. Um, I think so. You know, um, and it's cool yeah, because that's definitely going to save you a little energy. Yeah, and I think that you can probably with a resistor, you can reduce the, the lighting so you can, you know, so you read your book or what at night, and then you can, if you need to see where you're going in the bedroom, you can turn it really bright. Um, I mean, again, this it's 5 volts at 59 milliamp for a 3 watt light bulb. Um, so it's using 0 0.3 watt of power, uh, but it's really bright. Um, so it's definitely an efficient system. Uh, you know, it would be probably a bit tricky to measure exactly uh, the efficiency, but um, with this coil, it's it's really really cool, really cool. Yeah, that's that's really neat. And and again, you know, like uh, sometimes this this type of energy that we're making is hard to measure. So we want to just look at what we could do practically. You know, exactly. Um, yeah, spot on. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and that, that's my, um, that's my goal is just to see what we can do, you know, and, and see how much we efficiency we can get out of these systems as easy as possible. You know, I don't want to get too complicated cause I want to, I want to open it up for uh, a general, um, idea of, of, uh, how these things work for more people to understand. And the more complex you make these ideas, I think it, uh, it's off putting to some people, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I, you know, we could probably maybe get a similar efficiency, you know, if we're not, for the people who are not using the 432 coil, if they are using the standard PoE coil, um, you know, they probably can get similar efficiencies, you know. Um, I think the the dual fifth, the modified dual fifth circuit from Daniel Nunez, um, mm -hmm. I think is a really cool little circuit. It's really, it's really, um, it's fairly easy to put together and you've got to get your head around the wire because you have the start of the wire with the end of the wire. Mm. And the trick of it is very similar to, well, it's the, the you know, the traditional dual fifth. Uh, in fact, um, I've got, this is, a, this is the, I don't know if you can see this, but, this is the standard dual fifth circuit and you've got a normal inductor with a, um, it's something like 500, this is like a custom made, I made myself. You've got like 500 turns of the secondary um, and then the, I think they actually there are two identical, um, two identical length of wire and then you, you hook the start and the end together and you end up with high voltage. So this, this was the, you know, the old, uh, sort of dual fifth setup, uh, but I don't I don't get as good efficiencies uh, as the the PoE coil. So, but still, it's 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 a similar thing where um, you know it's it's the the Tesla pancake coil really. It's it's it it's the 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 setup where you you use the start of the wire and then the end of the wire and you connect them together. It's the same mm. thing. So it's something to do with this this current going in two in two ways at the same time, um, and that's yeah. exactly how they describe. Uh, honestly, uh, Daniel Nunez. That's exactly how he describes the PoE coil is a, a Tesla pancake coil in toroidal three dimensional space. Yeah, that makes sense. The vortex math pattern. Yeah, yeah. and that is, when you when you put it that way, it's just. Honestly, I, I've always thought uh, since then, like if Tesla was alive, this would just be an extension of his work. He would, uh, you know, he probably would have come to the same conclusion to some degree or another because vortex yeah. math is, you know, just Sanskrit uh, math. And he studied, you know, the ancient texts quite extensively. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of geniuses out there, you know, Marco Rodin and, um, uh, I mean, you know, Daniel Nunez, uh, I, I think is a genius too, because for, he is, absolutely. you know, how amazing and, 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 um, creative and, 
I mean, not only the coils he made look good, but they were also uh, extremely efficient. And, and you did get over Nietzsche out of a couple of them. Uh, I think one of them was the worm, wormhole coil. Um, uh, but uh, again, which circuit did he use? Did he use the open circuit? Was he with a stereo amp? And does he need to put a lot of power in there? Like, I mean, one video he was talking about putting 80 watt of power. So that's quite a lot of power, really you know, into your coil, into your lighting system. So, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't used a, uh, a resistive load, like a filament light. Um, is it the way to go? Because as the light bulb heat up, um, it, um, it, uh, the resistance decreases because of the heat. Um, so it's quite, I mean, resistive loads are very interesting, um, uh, electrical devices because, um, at the beginning, they've got a high resistance, and as the light bulb heat up, the resistance reduces. Um, so, is it is it one of the way with the PoE coil that Daniel was getting, um, you know, twenty watt of uh, efficiency out of of his his setup? I'm not sure, and um, yeah, I would love for Daniel to give us some tips here. So, <laughs> so I don't, yeah, I don't know honestly if this is true. It's just a suspicion I had because. Uh, Randy Powell was with uh, Daniel Nunez at the same Breakthrough Energy Movement conference. Yeah. I believe maybe, you know, like they may have been in communication and possibly, um, you know, that's that's how he got his start in all of this. Um, he, uh, honestly, like they, they had it. Randy Powell and Jack Scholes, they had it, you know. They just didn't have this configuration, the POE configuration. They had... Um, the, the they were using the donuts remember uh winding around a donut like actual where's the i i have it somewhere i thought i had it around here oh right here so like one of these yeah so that's how this all started and uh this is just an extension of that work yeah you know? so um i'm assuming you know they they had to have known what they were working on at the very least but again you know they if they did they didn't know everything because it took daniel nunez a long time to figure out how to do the magnetic synchronicity um like jack shoals and, and he did that with this coil specifically utilizing two uh i'm sorry three channels yeah I think what I I, I, I I was really impressed with um, when Daniel was showing those videos of the POE coil uh, pulsing, uh, you know, those magnets on um, just a shaft. Um, so yeah, the, the rotaries. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was really impressed with that. And I'm, I'm wondering if, you know, the way the we wind the POE coils where we've got a, a counter clock and the clockwise turn, I'm wondering if maybe in that um, pulse magnet motor setup, if he only wound the coil just one direction, so let's say let's say a counterclock direction or a clock direction only, um, just so the actual magnetic field can actually come out of it and pulse the uh, the shaft or the the magnetic that's, field. That's absolutely interesting that you say that um, because if you look at here, let me actually share the screen um give me one second uh, okay so if you look at one of their videos i don't know if you've noticed but it is no there's no interference pattern here see that I, yeah well that makes sense right I yeah. mean, the one in the back does, but it, they're testing. You know, he's testing the different types of efficiency, yeah. and that those these are a lot smaller. Yeah, you know, so I don't know. Like it, it makes sense what you're saying. I think I think you're onto something there. I really do, and I think one of the ways to maximize the efficiency of the system is by utilizing this rotor magnetic rotary in some way. You know what it feels like, and 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 maybe I could be completely wrong. What I'm gonna say, but it it looks like 
imagine this is like a high frequency pulsing coil, right? Um, uh, it sounds very similar to um, uh, to Fein Heinz's um, 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 uh, high frequency pulse uh, motor. Um, it's very similar to Fein Heinz, where Fein had a high impedance coil really really high impedance coil and he would be pulsing it at, at really high frequency and he would ride the uh the lenses low so the because of the frequency the the frequency would not fight lenses low but it would ride like a wave almost you know when you have a surfer catching a wave mm. and he's on top of the right. wave and the fact that you can ride the lenses low you suddenly you uh you bypass all the 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 things that stops you from getting high efficiencies and high um, uh, even in some cases of a unity because wow. um Fein Heinz has showed it in some videos he says here's my input here's my output and the output was like four watt extra of power uh from the input just with a, a high very very high impedance coil pulsing it at really high frequency um he would ride the lenses low which has always been an obstacle in 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 um, in the pulsing motor. Or everybody's like, oh yeah, my pulse motor, um, I can't get over unity out because lenses low is stopping is stopping the the the, the rotor to, to 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 spin freely. And it it in some ways the those POE coil wound in one direction. We know they are high impedance coil uh, because they are they are um, a couple of hundred ohms. Um, and then pulse in high frequency, it reminds me very much of Fein Heinz's, although they are, you know, they're different geometry, they are different, you know, uh, um, um, even resistance, e even configuration, but they're quite similar in the way that they are, they are both uh, somewhat high impedance, even though this one is uh, the POE coil wound in one direction is really interesting because it must be pushing a pole out, you know, like um, before we, uh, like I think in your setup, Ben, you, you got the North Pole out, but when I test mine, I can't get a, a North Pole or a South Pole out of it. It's 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 almost like it's it's squished right in the in the center of it, and there's a thin yeah. North Pole stuck in there somewhere. Um, so there's a couple of theories on this, um, but I only got a detection of either pole when I reached a past a certain power threshold. Um, and you know, maybe you're just not cranking it up enough to yeah. detect it. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, that's what I experienced, but yeah. you know, at the same time, I do have imperfections that may be leaking the pole. In your case, you might have a more perfect, you know, constrainment of those poles. Who knows? You know, yeah. it'd be a lot of, yeah, I'll have to try to crank up the power and, and see, see what I get. But, yeah. uh, I mean, those are really, really interesting set up that uh what daniel done with the the poe coil wound in one direction only uh um and then pulsing those 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 uh those magnets yeah that was really cool yeah um, because like, again that that's a very i mean to me and you who've been building these coils for a while that's a really simple you know design for one we could whip one up real fast you yeah. know what i mean yeah so and uh, in terms of maybe maybe even having that, because I, I was thinking of having that one as the primary uh, driving motor for for the scooter transportation device that I was uh, considering for phase three uh, testing of these coils. Um, that you know that design might be ideal. Yeah, but it's um, a really really cool design. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more more about phase three in a minute. I just had a couple of questions for you. Um, have you had any uh, luck testing with batteries yet? Um, DC batteries I've had, um, but um, I think um, I probably, once I've got my, for example, you know, the... Uh, uh, this POE coil with the 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 three watt LED light, and I really like the efficiency of it. And now I know that you know my power requirements uh, needs me to have at least five volt and fifty nine milliamps. 
um, then I'd be quite keen to actually, you know, actually package this into like a night lamp and um, just using DC power um, and um, probably rechargeable batteries just because it's less waste, you know, because if we use the nine volt al alkaline batteries, once they, they, they run out of power, you know, people just end up just um, um, uh, throwing, it, throwing them away um, into like uh, the proper recycling um, um, places. But I think just uh, maybe a rechargeable battery, lithium battery uh, for this little night light setup would be kind of fun. Um, it looks super efficient. So um, I know I could, I could get my, you know, uh, my money's worth just, just with that little setup. Um, so yeah, so I think DC battery, um, I think it's great if you want to really hook up your oscilloscope and your grand probe to your DC, DC circuit, it's really, really good because you, you can really get a more accurate look of, of your wave. Um, but when I use my power supply, I can crank up the power, not have to worry too much about the, you know, the DC power, because usually when you have DC power, you need to have some kind of bug boost converter because you you always need to limit your current um, your current output unless you have high resistance or you need to limit your voltage output. So bug boost is really cool because you can adjust your your power and then the bug boost would would uh, regulate your your power. So yeah, I mean definitely once my setup is ready like this one, I, I really like it. So I'll probably put it in like a you know my night lamp. And I'll use DC power for that, yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I'd like to do the same. And also, since winter is actually coming, um, I was going to ask you if you have any ideas or suggestions on how I can turn one of these coils into, you know, a more efficient uh, uh, inducting inductor heater. Um, because the the unit that I have for my apartment is really expensive uh, to run. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Uh, that probably would be a question for Daniel Nunes, to be fair, because um, yeah. he he knew how to um, wire those coils for um, high voltage for lighting, and but he also said that there was a way to hook it up for high current, low voltage, and right. prob probably for you know for inductions, you probably want to have um, high current um, and you know, higher currents than, than your voltage. So that I makes mean, sense. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. I was just hoping maybe you, you had some information that you remembered. Cause I know you were following them before um, they went silent. Correct. No, not at all. Um, I actually got, I got into it because I saw your guide, um, your POE coil guide on a forum actually. And, um, and oh. I saw that and I loved what I was seeing and, um, I, I love the geometry of the coil and I could see, I could see the, uh, similarities with the Rodin coil and, um, 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 and I think the one, um, I think it was actually the POE coil or the uh, slash Haba coil that um, you were um, showing in your guide. And yeah, I and it wasn't so long ago, really. It was, are we talking a few months ago or something? I got into it. Oh, wow. That's just a testament of your research skills because some of the, the videos and, and information about you know their work, I haven't been able to find, honestly. So that's that's really a delight to have you here for all the missing pieces of the puzzle, honestly. Well, Ben, I mean, you you got to be motivated into looking into this because um, uh, you know if I never came across your guide, I I would have I would wouldn't be here actually today, just um, showing you my progress. Um, so it's credits to you again, Ben, because you've you've been motivating a lot of people looking into that stuff and. Um, and interestingly enough, we, we're still making discoveries. Like even this little 432 POE coil um, is super efficient for a free watt light. Oh, uh, we got a mute. If, if I had it? not uh, came across your guide. Oh, I'm sorry. You got you got a cut out for me for a minute. Oh, no, no, I was just saying that, you know, I, I would have never got involved if I, if I 
had never seen your guide, so it's credits to you, Ben. You know, so. Well, I appreciate that. I hope I hope I inspired some people, and it looks like I did. So, but no, you you've uh, been tremendous in helping me um, advance uh, my research with the coil in terms of trying to you know utilize it in my everyday life and trying to make my life a little bit easier as well. So, you know, phase three testing is coming up and um, I do have a, like a, an idea for it. That I'd like to run by you and see what you think. Um, so as you know, phase three uh, testing will be trying to implement the coil as practical uh, transportation, you know, just something that's slow, but you know, I can get around locally and demonstrate the efficiency of the coil as well so uh maybe a scooter or a go-kart whatever that looks like you know just a small transport uh and i think uh for developing the scooter idea i want to start off very small and simple uh, i think the best place to start in that respect is actual starter for the scooter my idea is uh for the starter uh, uh, is a key coil that you use as an ignition switch, a small primary coil, just big enough to act as the ignition coil. And then a twin coil that fits right on top of it in a little, you know, input socket, a key coil. So, um, to my knowledge and in, in my research, there's two primary ways to do this. You can either put a tiny capacitor on the key coil to rectify the DC signal. You can uh, do this maybe with a low power open relay uh, that closes when it detects the DC output. Uh, once the coil receives the energy, the DC is outputted, it triggers the relay, closes the ignition circuit, effectively acting as a contactless key. But this would also mean the circuit um, only closes when the key coil is within proximity of the ignition coil. That's what we want. Uh, I'm sorry, but this, this would also mean this would make your key larger. So uh, we don't want the key to be any larger than possible. So we, another way to do that is to put the trigger on the primary coil, the ignition coil, um, by attaching a detection circuit maybe to the ignition coil uh, that maybe senses when the key coil is near, uh, some kind of sensor that detects the change in electric field when the rodent coil is present maybe. Um, but uh, I think that it could be um, a very cool way to demonstrate you know, just as the starter um, what do you think? Do you think that's possible to act, to have two, you know, twin coils, maybe really small ones, just act as like the starter that closes the circuit and, and you're able to power the system? So, so, so can you, um, can you just give me a picture of, um, so you'd have, you'd have basically like a, an, an ignition coil a bit like a um like a tesla coil essentially is that is that your idea but what what would it ignite though what what um what is your setup so you know how the coils will induce energy into one another when yeah. you put them on top of one another if yeah two very small ones um i want to try to close the circuit by having the uh, like a magnetic induction, right? So you're you're yeah. you're you're doing like some kind of pulses. So you're pulsing one coil, and you're you, you're trying to to get a magnetic induction into the other coil. Is that what you're trying to do? Yes. Do you think that's possible? Yes. I mean, um, it's worth trying. Um, I think if I was to um, look at powering some kind of vehicle, um, whether to be a scooter or something smaller. I think I would look at uh, Daniel Nunes' video where um, he's using a pulse motor uh, or um, some kind of pulse motor to pulse into the, um, the batteries. Um, and then having the batteries charging up and then use the battery to actually power your scooter. So it would be um, an electric powered scooter, uh, okay. electric um, electric scooter, um, um, a bit like a, like a, you know, like a kind of 
um, go-kart type electric setup, um, but it would be with the battery. So you, I, if the way I would do it would be to, to find a way to charge your batteries um, with, with um, um, either um, a pulse system, so maybe a circuit that pulls your coil and creates um, uh, inductive spikes and then you, you catch those mm. spikes and then and then uh, charge your batteries with that. Uh, but if there are lead acid batteries, um, there's a whole science with lead acid batteries where you have to um, pulse them, but then you have to let them rest so they can they can stabilize. So then, so you can't really have an accurate power reading as soon as you're pulsing it. It just gives you an idea. Um, I know people have like been. Um, studying lead acid battery for decades um uh and it's it's quite a complex science um but i think if if i if i could think of something that could work would be um maybe like a pulse motor a bit like what daniel had with his poe coil where it's 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 pulsing um uh, this 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 mag magnet wheel uh on the shaft and then um and then feed yeah, the power. Video. You know. I'm sorry, I was, I was just trying to find the video while you're talking. Yeah, yeah, and then feed the power onto the your battery, and then use those batteries to to run to power your scooter. I think that that would work. Um, Something like that. Yeah, that's the possibility. I'm not, I'm not really sure what he's using. Maybe the jewel thief. I'm trying to get a glimpse of the circuit in the background. Cause... I think I think he's got um, he's got a whole sensor then. It's got a, it's got a whole sensor that is uh, turning on and off the um, the circuit as the magnet is going past the the coil. Mm. You can you can only do that with a with a whole sensor. So what kind of sensor would would be would you be able to do that with? It's a whole sensor. It's a switch. It's a it's a it's called a uh, it's a magnetic switch. So it's a whole sensor. So as your ah. north pole of your magnet. Um, um, moves towards your coil, the whole sensor will actually uh, turn on and it will pulse the power as it senses your 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 magnet turning towards your um, your coil. So um, um, it, it, it will have to be a whole sensor because you can't get that speed uh, unless you can you can measure where, the, the your magnet is located in relation to your coil. You can't pulse. You can't pulse right. your. You can't pulse your magnet unless you know where your magnet is. Because if you pulse it, your magnet does not know where the. You have to be at a precise time and space to pulse this. It has to be with a, a whole sensor. So it's just a magnetic switch. The whole sensor will detect. Yeah, it'll detect if a north pole, and as as you move your magnet, it will just it will like this it'll just fly off it will go super super fast and perhaps this one here he's got it looks like it's got some kind of um you know poe coil whether if it's a four three two or just a, a free free two or whatever it is he, he probably would have one wire where he's he's pulsing it and he's using the whole sensor to turn the switch on and off when the magnet's going in and perhaps he's using the the other wire as the inductive spikes where he could be using that to to um to charge a small battery, and maybe with that battery you could maybe uh, maybe have enough charge to power um, like a, a go kart or uh, a very small one, you know, or right. a, a very small electric scooter. But you, you'd you'd want to be able to get your inductive spikes back to your battery in some ways, a bit like a you know like a John Bedini um, you know SG motor, you know, or um, yeah. Right, that's actually a, a good segue into the next uh, section. Um, I'm trying to find it here. Give me one second. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, this, uh, honestly, 
might be the exact uh, thing we need for um, powering the scooter and maybe yeah. even driving the wheels if we can figure out how to, you know, restrict the um, the motor enough, but in balance, uh, you know, balance the power load or whatever. Because when we, I think you know, the, issue, the issue I've got with the wheel, and I like it, but the issue I've got with the wheel is that you need a enormous amount of power that you would not be able to produce on the spot. So what I'm trying to say is you mm. need to you need to store your power um, in a battery and then use that battery for your for your motor. So that would be probably the most efficient in your recommendation and just forget about yeah because that's gonna slow down the spinning which is going to slow down the energy production. And then if you think about it logistics wise, it's just not going to be easy if you if you wanted to have something like that powering your your wheel imagine let's say you have uh 20 amps of current going through this wire it will melt it down you know you're gonna need to have like i don't know like like some ridiculous amount of gauge power just to be able to um to to put that huge power through right um um and a lot of a lot of people I have seen they, they use they use a similar setup and they'll charge the battery with it and then use the battery to put in your electric go kart or electric uh, scooter um, to to then drive off. I mean, it would be fun even just to be able to create a a POE pulse motor. That would be incredible, you know. Yeah, no. Um, well, this is why I wanted to show you this real quick. Give me one second. I'm going to pull it up. Stop sharing that. So I had a viewer uh, who sent me this custom uh, Bedini circuit that he made. And it is... Here, let me blow it up a little bit. So it is... Uh, modified Bedini SSG um, that he was trying to get um, working without um, the the battery, so he uses two capacitors here, and he replicated the the circuit and mirrored it on this side. And uh, I'll just read what what he had to say real quick. Um, yeah. Uh, he said that some years ago he was uh, screwing around with a minimalist Bedini SG circuit minus the trigger coil and in his discussions it was suggested to replace the charge battery with a capacitor from there the schematic uh layout uh give me one second uh, from there the schematic layout further suggested that the whole circuit could be mirrored so i got to work in the sim what I ended up with was something resembling a ZVS uh, driver, but with a twist. The inductive spike is thrown across the neutral plane into one of two capacitors and routed back through the opposite switch to the load on the next cycle. Interesting, uh, the smaller capacitor, the, uh, the more in intense one, um, currents through the load and faster cycling. That's more intense. Oh, has more intense uh, currents through the load. So he said... Uh, while it excelled at driving pulse motors, some weird effects were observed for the circuit. Um, unintentionally, it went into self-oscillation mode. Um, so he said it became the SG became an SSG. Uh, the field around the coil became squidgy. It felt the same as swiping a magnet over a thick block of aluminum or copper, but extended through the volume of uh, to some distance. He describes it as some kind of super diamagnetism. Um, and he goes on to say there are two versions, single inductor and double inductor. If your rodent coil has three legs and you prefer DC pulses, I would recommend the double inductor variant. A note about the schematics is you'll see a bunch of one ohm resistors sprinkled around. These are strictly to prevent the SIM from crashing and should be omitted from any physical prototype. There are six transistors, four of them all on the left side are fast, small signal BJT comprising the level shifting preamble and two of them on the right side will be your large main switches. P 
PNP on the bottom, NPN on the top, and we'll need a high VCE around 200 volts at minimum. And I'm going to have him on a, um, a show next week, hopefully Tuesday. Uh, we'll have him on to uh, walk us through this, this circuit a little more. But as you can see, it's really cool. He says it's good for pulse motors. And it has the ability, look at this, to swap from true AC to a DC uh, a pulsed wave. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really clever stuff, and I love looking at the the wave at the bottom. I love the inductive spikes that he's getting, like on the pulse. Yeah. You get a huge inductive spike, and that's what you want to get, and that's the kind of stuff you want to harvest. Um, it would be really cool if he could build something like that, and then um, actually uh, maybe see if we could if we could get just an oscillation. I mean, that would be absolutely epic if we could get oscillation going on. Right, exactly. Yeah, so um, I thought that was really cool. I'm not um, knowledgeable enough on the subject to actually, you know, know if this is going to work so or even how to start building it. Um, so I'm going to have him on to give me some more background information and maybe make a, a materials list to make sure I have everything and make sure, you know, I don't screw it up. So basically what you did for me is you walked me through it and I'm going to have him somewhat do that for me so I can get a good start on it, you know, and I'll, um, don't get the wrong uh, interpretation of the circuit, I guess. Yeah, and I think I think that um, if, he, if he can help you uh, uh, maybe put it together in some ways, I think we would all benefit to actually mm -hmm. see um, – like a step by, by step on how to replicate it, because I think a lot of us would be keen to actually learn something new. Um, I think those um, inductive spikes look really awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And, you and know, just can... look at the flow of the circuit, how it's switching back and forth. Yeah. Like positive and oh, it's beautiful. It's like a dance. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's alive. It's 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 a bit like a, a bit like. A, uh, almost like a, a heartbeat, you know. It's uh, yeah. It just, it, it just, um, you know, it, it goes everywhere. It, it it pulses everywhere. It's really really cool. Yeah, that's neat. Ba major shout out to Shanjax, and uh, hopefully, if everything works out, we'll have him on Tuesday, um, along with Charles um, uh, Milligan, um, to discuss this circuit because I know Charles was interested as well. Um, and, you know, obviously you're in a different time zone, but if you ever wanted to come on, um, you know, just let me know or I'll send you an email invite. I send people invites. Um, I don't expect people to show up at the last minute, but um, or or even, you know, like uh, at all if I have it planned. But at the same time, I like to send them out just on the off chance, you know, somebody wants to jump on or has a minute. Yeah, I, I I apologize if um, if I can't show. It's like you said, we are we are five hours apart, and I mean, uh, for me, usually like this time of the night, it's it's bedtime for me. So, um, but yeah, I I just um, I appreciate all you're doing actually, because you know everybody gets um, motivated, excited, and um, and I think um, I think we've got to keep on pushing forward and um, and make discoveries, make breakthroughs, and um, I think even like your idea of um, like even um, some kind of pulse motor or some kind of way to pulse something, um, even if we can harvest the pulse back into the battery a little bit like similar to, you know, John Bedini's uh, technology, um, you know, um, um, there's some amazing stuff that can come out of it, you know, Ben. So, yeah, exactly. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's it's exciting actually just, just talking about your phase three because I mean, the, imagine seeing people with their pulse motors. I mean, how cool would that be? You know, and yeah. be able to have some spikes. That would be so cool. And people need a visual to see it working. You know, like I, I'm sorry, it's it's only going to excite a very few amount. Uh, you know, like uh, really uh, small amount of enthusiasts who are really excited about this stuff. If you just show multimeters and and data and statistics and you know, people need to see like a like a car or a scooter or, you know, like a motor, you know, something working that they can see with their own eyes. You know, yeah. it's it really makes a difference. And I think that um, once we have more um, stuff like that and we will, you know, because we have a lot of people building these now, including you yeah. and myself. So yeah. once we have more of those kinds of devices where we could just be like, hey, yeah, check this out, you know, <laughs> 
I think it, we're really going to start something here. Now, I think you, you gave me an idea already. You see, I'm going to try to hook up a whole sensor to the the PoE coil, the 432 one, and actually, nice. um, yeah, hook up a whole sensor and, and put a put a, 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 a magnet on the shaft and uh, and get it to pulse. And I, I surprisingly, I don't think that's too difficult because the, the whole sensor does all the work. You know, it detects when the magnet is present and then turns the power on and then post the post the magnet and then it turns itself off until the next magnet gets past the 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 whole sensor detects it turn it on and it spins like mad and then you know you use one wire for this and then can you use the other two wires to actually get the inductive spikes out of it that would be cool um so yeah some more testing to go for sure nice yeah that's awesome no, i can't wait i can't wait to see um the this circuit specifically what it's capable of and i can't wait to see um what you have next for the version 3 coil because that's a really nice coil that coil is like the penultimatum like uh the wormhole you're talking about the wormhole one yeah <laughs> no, no 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 the version 3 it's it's like the lexus of the coils <laughs> which one the 432 are you talking about yeah the 432 it's so yeah, yeah, yeah. looking and it's just, it, it seems like it's like not too complex to uh, wrap yeah, my head around at least. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's a piece of art and it's absolutely beautiful. And um, the fact that, you know, when I showed you this anomaly with the, the neons, the fact that you can, you could run two loads with, with um, uh, one coil and not, not, um, taking away the power only in one place but it goes in both places at the same time this this blew my mind a bit this this there's something going on with this um and i don't know what it is but um there's some interesting things happening with this coil for sure yeah so that just it's further proof that we need to test do more tests and have more people on this so um yeah you know, it, if anybody has already been, you know, you know, professionals out there already been researching the rodent coil and been stuck or have their own insights, please, you know, get in contact with us. Um, you know, we'll leave the contact information in, in the uh, description of the video, at, at least on my part. Um, I don't know, Michael, if you wanted me to give out your information, but I'm going to have my, uh, my email available on the description along with other ways to contact me. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm up for it, Ben, because I think that um, I think everybody knows something that um, that that would help um, each other. So I think um, sharing the knowledge and uh, you know, just like you said, uh, if if someone's been working on those on those coils, just just come forward and uh, tell us what you've been doing, because um, we can definitely learn from each other. And um, this the stuff I might pick up. Uh, from someone like I pick up stuff from you, Ben, all the time. I think you like really motivating a lot of people. So um, I, I think we, we need to, to um, we need to, to to find more breakthroughs. And uh, and I can't wait for phase three. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait either. It's gonna be really cool. Um, it's it's not gonna happen for a long time though. I can imagine phase two might take us another, you know, could take us a year or so more more, you know, to yeah. finally tune the system. Yeah. Um, but uh, once we once we figure out how it's going to work, you know, as a pulse motor, like you said, m most efficiently, um, I think that's that's when we'll, we'll start to have some real fun. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds awesome, Ben. Um, so that's that's pretty much all I got today. Um, if you have anything else you'd like to share or uh, anything you'd like to say before we close out the uh, the sesh here. Um, just, just, um, yeah, if anybody's got like yeah, coils they're working on, like the, the POE coil, the ABAC coil, uh, or the Rodan coil, just come forward. Cause we want to, we want to hear what, what, what you're doing and, uh, and you know, what circuit you're using and, and, uh, what efficiency you're getting. And, um, I mean, are you using copper for wire or are you using something else? You know, are you using, you know, nano coated copper or, you know, what sort of efficiencies are you bringing to the table, you know, so we, we want to hear from you. So, um, but yeah, ben, great show, Ben. I mean, uh, you keep going, you know, it's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate it, all the viewers out there who have supported us. Um, and 
uh, also giving us invaluable information. Like every every time we go live, we have somebody who gives us some kind of insight that that helps us in some way. So we appreciate all the love and support on that end as well. So um, yeah, with that, um, I'm gonna close out. Um, I appreciate everything, Michael, and I, I, I wish you the best of luck in your future experiments, and I hope to hear from you real soon. Yeah, Ben, same here. Appreciate, appreciate your time. Thanks, Ben. Of course, anytime. All right. Take care, Ben. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Michael Morell. Uh, the genius who cracked the Nunez method. So uh, with that, I appreciate all the love and support, guys. See you next time. Peace. In a town down south where the five flies low, there's a man named Michael with a vision to show. Billy calls it gold. He's got the spark. Dreaming of a future that'll light up the dark. But on the other side, Bill Nye's on the rise with his lab charts. Cut down all the lights And it's just fixed It's all in the map You can't pull from the ether You're just chasing a path But oh my God's rising like a morning sun With the power of ether We will be outdone Now stand up and shout 